Bum, bum. Uh, hey, Thunder E here, and I was trying to time the start of the show. Didn't work. Welcome to episode 37 of The Weekly, season how, three. How come we don't have a show intro? That could be like, you know, we should be able to afford that in the budget by now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm season three, to no intro. Intro. <laughs> and somebody just decides to cut me off and says, how come we don't have a show intro? Anyway, uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I was just reading. I was reading our recent show copy, and it says season three, episode thirty-seven. I was like, "Well, ah, oh, God, you know." All right, <laughs> let me finish the intro. Let me finish the intro. With us, of course, is Mr. Warren <laughs> Bowman. That's me. All right, and of course, Mr. Juan Bagnell from uh, Pocket Now. I've got my copy. All right, and uh, Sam is uh, out of town this week. Uh, you will have some interesting coverage from him next week, but hopefully. Um, and uh, we were hoping to have a special guest, uh, but I will apologize because I sent him the copy late. So anyway, guys, let us kick the show off. Any uselessness for the week, because I, I really have none. No, I, I mean, like, we've got some major bummers to talk about for Samsung mm. this week. We might as well yeah. lead off with that as the uselessness because enough has been coming out about Samsung's corporate culture that has been very disappointing to hear. Yes, it has been. So this week, the Galaxy Note 7 yep. uh, is no more. Uh, production <laughs> has ended. Uh, they've stopped it because of the second round of Note devices started catching fire. It wasn't just one, it wasn't two. It was, I think it was ah, five, yeah. five or seven or something like that. You know, there's a, there's a large number of devices uh, blowing up and catching fire. And also, uh, start, yesterday, the FAA put a ban on uh, the device, anyone traveling with the device. So if you're going to the airport or you're traveling, do not take a Note 7 with you because it will be taken away from you. You cannot travel with it. Uh, and Sam was traveling, so he had to switch to a uh, Nexus 5X because Ew, he could not use his Note 7. So, um, all right. So, guys, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about the death of the Note 7, uh, how it affects the brand, uh, a couple other things in terms of usage, uh, which su surprisingly has gone up. <laughs> usage of the Note 7. But let's start with the the end of the Note 7. I'll start with you, Juan. Um, you know, how how do you sum it up for Samsung? I I wouldn't even begin to guess how to sum it up for Samsung. It's a supremely disappointing situation. Uh, Samsung has done not a very good job of handling the media involved. Um, maybe my baby uselessness would go to the fact that we've yet to hear, I think, that really contrite um, sincere apology from anyone at Samsung. They held, held a press conference. What was it on Thursday? That was in Korea, right? Yeah, it was in Korea and it was covered by Korean outlets and we didn't see any video from that. We didn't see, we, we got a couple little, you know, uh, quotes yeah. and that's really all we've gotten. And we've still yet to really get any concrete information on, excuse me, what's going on with the, uh, the these batteries. Yeah. We're still sort of uh, guessing as to what the problem is. So there is no way to sum this up. And and I think that's really what's going to damage Samsung's brand in the long run is what we've been hearing about are some really neat rumors about the Galaxy S8. And with the the way that they, they rushed the replacement uh, on the Note 7, which I think is part of the reason why these replacements also have issues is that they didn't really know what the problem was. Mm -hmm. uh, no consumer is going to be excited about an S8 when there's still that consumer in this consumer consciousness there's still this notion of samsung phones explode until they can deliver a message and and get it out in a in appropriate venues i'm talking like tv i'm talking yeah. radio buy movie trailer time in theaters you know really work to communicate to their customers we have a handle on this we we know what the problem is and moving forward we know how to solve it until then, we can't sum it up. I mean, it's it's a it's a clusterfuck of epic proportions, and this brand is incredibly damaged. I mean, estimates and in, in for the fallout of this it, it, up front, it's going to cost multiple billions of dollars, and I've seen some estimates ranging from seventeen to twenty billion dollars over the next two fiscal quarters. Well, that's um, in sales, but in terms of actual losses, would be about uh, two point six to three billion. Uh, no, that's what I mean. Is yeah. it's already it's already in the billions, and it's impossible to calculate with any kind of sure. 
uh, sureness what over the next fiscal quarter or two this is really going to resemble. So even leading into a new product launch in January for you know Galaxy S8, we're still probably going to be weathering the fallout of an entire phone launch, which is completely. Uh, <laughs> just uh, completely imploded. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah. that, that that to me was sort of a funny pun. But uh, it, it, it's it's tragic, it's terrible, and it leaves a whole group of our audience um, and all of our the people who watch our content and, and read our stuff completely in the lurch. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren. <sighs> so uh, the, to sum it up, so we're summing it up here for Samsung, I guess, like... What's there to say? There isn't much to say until they figure out what the problem was so they can get out a proper apology as, as to why, or maybe just an explanation and whatnot. I think them at least handling recalls, pushing forward with that, making sure uh, as, as best they could that, you know, to put the message out to safety as a priority should be something commended because most companies don't do that, especially when car companies recall things. You don't see them necessarily putting out the message as, as probably as well as Samsung does about turning in your car and getting your stuff in place. <laughs> you, you, you're in a death trap versus, <laughs> oh, your pants might get hot. You know, like, it's, 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 you know what I'm saying with that. But the thing is, I think what, what, what people are overlooking here is that it's, uh, or maybe getting, it is does, does damage to Samsung's brand, but they're actually kind of lucky here in a weird way because this only damages the Note brand. And as big as the Note is, it's still a niche phone. This did not happen to the Galaxy S line, which is their flagship, which is their namesake. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think for, for techies, we all understand that. I, I get messages from family. My mom has a Galaxy S5. She doesn't want another Galaxy. Galaxy phones explode. I, I think Samsung, because of the way that Samsung has not gotten out ahead of this, and the fact that the, all of their phones look so similar now, I, I think the the damage to the brand extends beyond just the Note. I, I, enough I, consumers, I, I, I agree with you that enough consumers will probably still understand that the S is different than the Note. But the, the person who walks into a carrier store to buy a phone and is expecting help from people behind the counter, I don't think they're going to be swayed by, oh, well, that's different. That's the note. The note was the problem. The S is fine. You see, you see, it's funny, uh, uh, but, but just quickly, uh, sorry, Warren. It's funny you, you both mentioned that because in my own circles, because I'm seeing a split, a lot of people actually know the difference from people I know. And, but also a lot of people also have that mixed fear. Some people are, some people that I know who know the difference go, ah, you know, maybe not a Samsung anymore. Or other people go, you know what? I know it's the S, it's not the Note. I'm glad I bought the S early in the year. So I think Samsung, it, Samsung's at the point where they can save it, but to, to Juan's and, point, it's also very gonna be very difficult. I, I don't, I, I think it'll be somewhat difficult for them, but at the same time, people know the difference between a Note and a Galaxy. They don't even put the term Galaxy in front of the Note branding and haven't really advertised it as that since probably the four. They've they've done a good job in saying Note is Note and Galaxy S is Galaxy S. And while there's some people who confuse it, you'll have those, but I think they'll be okay with that. I think this would be a much worse situation if this was the Galaxy S7 or one, one of those phones blowing up like that. Because I think then, then, then that damages all their phones, uh, uh, trickles down a whole lot more uh, because of that. But what I think they'll, um, I think they'll recover from it. It's, it's, it's the fall. It's not like they don't have a good phone out now that people do like. It isn't the Note, but it's still a phone that pretty much has all those same features and can push themselves through. Um, we're heading into holiday season. It's already pretty much down for smartphones in general. I don't see. I don't see us. I don't see it being a heavy smartphone year in terms of sales. I think a lot of people are going to be waiting till the, probably the following year to see what new things sort of come out. And the fact that this is happening towards the end of the year, and by the time they get to the S8. I think there'll be enough space where they'll be able to, while those questions will arise again, they will somewhat be able to get past that and kind of move move forward. It isn't good that this happened, but I think they have an out to, to get themselves back into the right um, space. Now, as far as the note line is concerned, um, I'm not sure what's gonna go down with that. I, that, that might be- It's gonna be called a, Galaxy forever. That, that <laughs> note might not, exist in the same form that or that branding or they'll try something new it might actually end up being a blessing in disguise that they try some new thing and 
all of a sudden it's this new style of phone that comes out and we might never have gotten to that if we didn't have this you know phones exploding randomly out of nowhere yeah you know? we, we we had sort of a little mini contest on the pocket now podcast talking about well it could be the galaxy s scribe it could be the galaxy s pro it could be the galaxy scribble <laughs> now i wouldn't be surprised if they do come next year and they just call it they just call it the 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 s pro or they call it the note pro they still keep the note naming around for it i don't think it's going to disappear fully but i think they will the naming will change yeah the naming will change we and and i actually we might not see a new uh s pen type phone next year they might wait and give it another year before they actually put another one you know we we talked about this months ago that you know same same thing when we were talking about apple rumors because there was that point remember we were talking there could be three iphones yeah yeah and um and and the notion of an iphone well but i mean the notion of an iphone pro specifically to include stylus support for the apple pencil it doesn't come with an Apple Pencil, but this this larger screened iPhone would support it. Obviously, that didn't come to pass. I told I could totally here's see something iPhone. like that. Here's here's the pen. But I could totally work. see Samsung doing something like that. Whereas instead of having a specific note line, if they just built in stylus support for the S8 Edge, and that could be an additional accessory that you could buy on your own if you wanted that kind of support, it would suck that it wouldn't have its own little um a way to dock it in the phone but you would still be able to kind of placate some of the people who really liked s pen i think there's an opportunity there for samsung to, to kind of focus oh. on making the s the crown jewel and and it already was the vanguard product i mean the note the note 7 brought some cool features like the iris scanner but it wasn't like it was the runaway tech piece uh, the the galaxy s7 and s7 for a while since like yeah. the note 5 it really yeah. has been so people know 5 has been a re- was a response phone yeah. and the, the note the note 7 was the same it wasn't yeah. the product which drove samsung innovation it just but, caught back up to the s or the earlier year that's why i think i kind of have this feeling like it may be gone but i don't feel as bad about it like if this was the note 4 i'd feel heavy morning about that <laughs> if this was the note four that this happened to but this is the, this is now the note which has been the second tier flagship phone for a while now and it's so i i i feel as though it's it, maybe it's calmer for them making it the second tier phone i don't know because they could because all us techies were we were always like the notes the lead phone and no nah, i think i think it was karma for s- skipping numbers I think it really. They technically didn't <laughs> skip numbers, though. That's the yeah, thing. I, I, no, I know, I know, I know that, but it's not that. To so the mass consumer mindset, they skipped a number. Well, and I, I, I mean, it, this, 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 <laughs> this, this is just what happens when you try to rush a phone because they think they're in such dire competition against. Exactly, Apple. you skipped a number. It's like the rush right there, and I'm just like, well, you're you're not in competition with these guys. It's like you two both have a giant part of the mobile market. Just deal with your market to just chill out. You don't have to sit here and feel as though like Samsung still had that feeling as though that they had to still, we got to beat Apple to market. I said, no, you don't. Yeah. You, so, no, you don't. All right. So so the other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, because I've seen this from my own videos about the Galaxy Note 7, my goodbye video and suggestions, and I'm sure you probably have to, uh, you know, Warren and Juan. Uh, you know, we got an article uh, yesterday. This was on GSM Arena talking about how uh, the usage of the Galaxy Note 7 has gone up. Now, they have a chart here and shows that after the first explosion, it's actually went up even to the point of the recall. And then after replacements and second explosion, it went up, it's at its highest now. So, I mean- I wonder if that was just because of it. (laughs) That was because they were in stock at that point. I mean, you went and grabbed them. I I really, I really, I I don't really see anything in that chart which speaks to me that we we see people acting recklessly. I think it's just orders were being fulfilled. I mean that too, but also it also points to the fact that a lot of Note users are having a hard time letting it go at the same time. I mean, well, I mean, even even just whether or not the phone is so good that they they can't part with it. it it's one, well, it's the emotional factor of I just spent $900 on this thing. And and two, it's the pain in the ass. Like for a lot of those people, they probably switched over from another phone. Yeah. Um, that's something well, we do on the regular. That's something consumers are loathe to do. Oh, you know, yes, like, yes. Well, we loathe it. Don't lie. We loathe it, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just yeah, mean that, it like, <laughs> it just, we just do it so do. often. <laughs> it, it, it becomes the sigh and the shrug of, oh, let me set up another phone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> first world tech reviewer problems. 
uh, but that that to me, I think it, it just sort of all lines up. I, the 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 mindset being, I need to replace this phone, but you know what? I'll go tomorrow, and then something comes up tomorrow, and it's like, I, you know what? I'll stick it. It hasn't exploded on me yet. I'll stick it out until the end of the week when I can finally go to the carrier store and take care of this. Then, well, you know, your kid gets sick, and you're like, well, okay, well, let me hold on to it for another couple of days. I I, I kind of see like then this note situation is gonna drag, just because phones are not things that people like to flip, and it's very inconvenient to break out a chunk of time and deal with people at a carrier store um, or at a Best Buy or wherever you got the phone to fully take care of it. Um, I, I think this is this is also one of the reasons why it's nearly impossible to calculate the near term fallout on this, because we still have to account for consumer behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think a lot of that has to do with um, there's just a, there's just a very devout note fans. That's just that's just that's just a very, very devout fan base. That loves their loves their phones. Typically, are probably a, uh, are a bit of a more towards a power user than the average smartphone user. Mm -hmm. So for them, one downgrading isn't necessarily a cool thing for them at all. <laughs> they, 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 that's just that's just not in the box. Yeah. That's just no 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 no. And then the other thing is it, it's just that like you said, setting things up. You know, it, it takes a lot more time to set things up, especially if you're a note user. You probably have a lot more applications and specifics and think tailor things a certain way to do that but but it's it's um it's i think i i think that's it's it's got a lot to do with how people are loyal to that brand i think galaxy has has that loyalty but there's a lot more casual users of that brand more yeah. often than not versus node users who are very very fickle samsonite note fans that are on the level of the Apple fanboy when it comes to that phone and don't want to, and, when you, and you're, essentially, you're essentially taking their candy away from them. Yeah. It, 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 it's going to be a slow process. And, and I mean, it's yeah. Not, I mean, it's not like well, the Note 5 is a and, bad and, phone because it's good, but it, it, it's just like, yeah, and in the, in the chat, you you know you've got to you've also just got to expend the uh, the mental energy on what phone you're going to replace it with, which I'm sure we're going to talk about too yeah. in a little bit. But um, music, my soul, uh, is it music is my soul? In the chat, is saying it took him an hour at an AT and T store, and that didn't um, factor into setting up the new phone. It was just how long it took to, to finally exchange Note Seven, and then uh, Kashif uh, Kashif Raja apparently works at Best Buy. And, and he's Sorry, on vacation bro. right now, field. but he knows that his crew is like is is scrambling on this stuff because it's taking up a lot of man hours at Best Buy. So that's another thing too is is like well, when something sure like this goes down, it's not like there are Samsung stores. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the, to yeah. factor this in. It's going to take up time at Best Buys. It's going to take up time at at um, carrier stores. This I I think this could weaken Samsung's negotiating position the next time a phone comes out. And, you know, like a Verizon says, like, well, we only want um, a red home screen with one panel that's full of Verizon apps. And they'll be like, well, we're Samsung. We don't need to do that. And you're like, well, your last phone exploded, so we're not going to carry your new phone. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure all carrier manufacturer negotiations go down that simplistically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, like there, there are so many countless dollars that we won't be able to factor into this affecting so many other organizations that it's just mind-boggling that one phone could upset the apple cart this oh no no really. it's very true but it's one of those things where maybe it's just me that likes to do organizational management it shouldn't be that stressful to actually do this it really shouldn't but we understand that a lot of these stores and you go to a t-mobile so i'm a t-mobile customer and it's like hell they don't understand how to manage anything that's the problem. You have all these problems. And you know, if Samsung was like Apple and had Apple stores or Samsung stores, it would have been a little easier because at least you can just say if you're in New York, you're in Boston, you're in San Fran, you know, you're in LA, you can go to the stores there, swap it out and leave. That's where a lot of the problem is. Um, and as you mentioned, hardcore users, Sam is a hardcore user. Sam was not going to let that thing go. Sam has four years of notes taken. I mean, he writes notes at work all the time. He saves, you know, 
were on S note. And now he started using Evernote. Then he switched to One Note because he can cross it over with his Surface. You right. know, I mean, like for him, it was and, and that was the same thing with Jaime. One Note on on the Galaxy Note was sick. I mean, mm -hmm. what he was doing at IFA with with his Note Seven and coordinating with One Note was actually really cool. I'm yeah. still never going to do that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but those are the, the kind of users there. that they have. You know, like literally as Sam was about to take the strip, there was no Sam. There's no thought process of not taking his note seven he was like nah until you know i think you dropped the the, the uh, article uh warren and i sent it to him i was like nexus 5x is like oh. <laughs> well, and to go from a note to a nexus 5x is such a severe step down well, well yeah. doesn't but doesn't border work supply a number of great options of phones and you support yeah but i mean it, it, it's, it's his that's just also his international travel phones it was just like all right I'll and he didn't he here. didn't have like a note 5 kicking around no no his note 5 so <laughs> his note 5 cracked right before he got a note 7 and then he cracked his original note 7 and swapped it out for you know replacement so i wish i mean like i mean not like anything like like this is ever going to happen again but i wish you guys had said something i even have just a couple i have two old note fours kicking around that still yeah, probably would have been, yeah. that would have been better solutions than the nexus 5x yeah, 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 definitely. Why did you give him a blue phone? That would have been better than that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what, 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 kind of, what, kind of, what kind of general Let's see, like a, a word. Every every phone day. that would have been better: the One Plus Three, the Axon Seven, the no, no, no. Okay, Honor Eight. Let's do it this way, right? Uh, just all to, of the just blues. tell E to look to his right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Sam, Sam loves his. He likes his five X. So don't even. Just not me. He actually likes his. 5X. Okay. So the only thing, the only thing I would say is, is I, I end up having to travel with Project Phi, but when I'm out of the United States, Project Phi seems to work just fine on my unlocked phone. So I'm not yeah. even gonna bother with the five X when I fly out again. Oh, the um, I, I use Project Phi, but I'm on a six P because I got sent. And um, yeah, uh, so I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm mad. Like I was tasked with reviewing the smaller phones. So, like, <laughs> I got the Galaxy S7. I got the iPhone 7. Wait, 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 wait. So I was like, ah, oh, come on, on. Come on. You're the one who says, you know, a big phone, small. So don't exactly. complain. Pretty well, much. No. So, so here's, here's, here's the, the thing though, is like when a big phone comes out and I feel it's done a good job of addressing the situation of those of us who have smaller hands, I'm a big fan. I still love my, uh, my V10. I think the V10 does an excellent job of addressing small hand users in both software and in hardware. Um, the 6P, I think, is a step in that same direction. I, that's why I was so cranky that when I was traveling, this 5X does not does not handle my work well at all. All right, and so I was so happy when I swapped the sim out. Like I was desperate. I popped the sim into my into my Honor 8 and I was like, "Oh, oh, it works." Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, much better. I'm, right, I'm, so I'm, I'm eventually going to have my sort of my review on Project 5. I'll let you guys know like that the sims will work on unlocked phones. It just it's tiered to T-Mobile. It won't go to like the Sprint side or anything like that. Yeah. That's oh, it'll still work in in the US. It just it just won't support CDMA. Yeah, essentially. Oh, Unless it, I'll have to give that a shot. Like from what I've found, it's like it instantly locked the T-Mobile, and I, I've tried five switch. But if the phone can't see Sprint's network or can't register to it, it really can't ah, do it. So oh, okay, I didn't realize that. But um, because there are a lot of people who use Fi on other devices. So since we're talking phone, yeah. about devices, uh, devices that can replace the Galaxy uh, Note Seven for people who have Seven there. I mean, None. that's that's None. the first thing. That is the first None. part. But I would suggest the Note Five as your immediate yeah. jump back. Yeah, yeah. Sliding if, back if, to a Note Five is probably your best bet yeah. if you really were using the, style the, the productivity features of the Note. Mm -hmm. um, you need the S Pen. If you need yeah. the S Pen, you need to go back to the Note Five. If if you just wanted the larger screen. S7 I don't know. I mean, like, I think the Galaxy S7 Edge is probably the, the closest six, DNA. The 6P is still pretty good as well, too, because you get the screens, you get the same screen size as well, too, with that. That's that's true. I mean, so screen size. I guess I was thinking more like you have enough of those other Samsung E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, you want, you want game, yeah. the better camera, you know, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But other, otherwise, if you wanted the multimedia, I, I would, I you know, no one's going to be surprised that I've been a fan of the V20. So. Yeah, if you want multimedia and camera performance, then this might be a, a time to look at what LG has to offer at the end of the year.
That's true. Now, this will roll into our other question. How does this benefit? Because the last device I mentioned was the Pixel. Um, you know, if you're looking for another, you know, Android alternative, that Pixel XL, sorry, uh, that is larger. How does this affect uh, Google? This is this is perfect timing for Google in a sense. None, because they borked it. I'm None. Just, wait, wait, I haven't finished no, like, I, even I think, talking. I, I think this <laughs> is going to be funny to. because like, I, I, I'm exactly in the opposite in the opposite camp. I think this is a huge opportunity for any manufacturer, and the only one who's spending money on advertising dollars is right Google. now is Google. Where? Yeah. Who? Who's oh yeah. Do oh, those who ads has, are running all over in has, LA. Who has a phone that's on all carriers available right now, coming on the phone that matches matches what the Note Seven does? Actually, the all carriers thing is the problem. Well, to not zero. to be able to walk into all carrier stores, but I just mean in terms of mind share, I'm not seeing any ads for the V20. I'm not yeah. seeing I, any no, ads, ads for an the, HTC. I've seen ads for the V20. I have seen ads for the V20 through. Not, um, I, not, I, I've seen an ad for the V20, but what I'm saying is Google Pixel ads are running on LA TV constantly. Yeah, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll there is no way. mind share in consumers for an LG V phone. There's the no. only time I, I have seen a V20 is in Warren's video and Pocket Now. I have not seen that shit anywhere. And you all should, should know that I have beef with LG, <laughs> just to state that clearly. Now you've seen, it on, a little, now we've seen it on the weekly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's, that's. <laughs> we, we we covered the V on your YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but you are right. I've seen ads for. Um, oh, yeah, I've seen ads for Pixel then. on now from uh, what is this? Imagine I can't imagine Agi. Imagine Sagi. I don't know what Struggle this name is, is but but the the <laughs> the Pixel is boring and the commercial is terrible. Um, I do not like the Pixel commercial, but well, I, I got to huh? give it. I got to give it to someone is spending money on advertising with the Note 7 leaving this power vacuum. You, you, I, I would never want to see LG try and throw shade at Samsung, but that doesn't mean they can't step up their consumer awareness. The only um, campaign running for LG right now is um, what is that? Joseph Gordon-Levitt has his hit record. <laughs> the, the hit record yeah. thing. Yeah. So Which I've seen more ads for this cool. year that launched last year. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's cool. I mean, it is. It is undeniably. Is cool it on, is it on TV or just on the web? It's, but right now, it's only on the web. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't I seen that on TV. But I've seen more on the web this year than when they launched that whole project last year. Well, you got to throw some on TV if you want. I mean, again, like you said, this is a time to go attack that mind share that Samsung is weak, the lion is down. You need to go ahead mm -hmm. and, and pounce on it. And LG, you get money from someone, you go. Now let's do yeah. this. I mean, you still have time. You still the phone's launching on the twenty fourth, I think. Um, yeah. On AT but, but LG's only. always classically had this problem. I mean, the, they had that it, huge campaign for the G five, T Mobile only, or something only like AT and T. I think that's the way it is. So, yeah, and that's another device, the V yeah. twenty. No, no, no well, V twenty. Yeah. We also got that got word that it will be going to Sprint. Oh, Sprint, Sprint. So, so two carriers. So, yeah. But I mm. thought it was also going to go to T Mobile too. Because no T-Mobile had their press release about about no, it'll go to T-Mobile. T-Mobile oh, no? also okay, is right. doing the same uh, the same deal. So T-Mobile and AT and T. I don't know if Sprint's going to be doing this. So in the United States, unfortunately, we're getting fucked that you don't get the really cool earbuds. Yeah, the, the, the awesome. hundred and fifty dollar yeah. B and O. But if you look at the fine print on the on the pre order pages, there is a trade in program where if you trade in, you'll get two hundred dollars off the phone, which is pretty decent considering this is more expensive than last year's V. And they'll throw in a free pair of the BNO earbuds. So if you've got an old phone kicking around that you can throw towards the trade in, then that becomes a slightly better buy. Hmm. So I, I don't know if Sprint's going to do that, but T Mobile and ATT are doing the BNO tie in. Okay. Hmm. All right. So then they need to spend money on some advertising, let people know that this device is coming out. Um, but as we know, LG likes to just. Yeah, it won't matter. LG has zero brand awareness. Thank you very much, Jonathan Jones. Yeah, Bam. and whatever whatever momentum they built up. I mean, this, this for as much as I love this phone, I'm I am shocked and I am pissed. Um, LG is releasing probably their most compelling device that they've ever put out, or at least put out since the G4. And then the G4 ran into boot looping issues. Um, <laughs> um, this is maybe one of the most compelling phones they've ever released, and LG is not excited to talk about it.
that's a huge problem. So I, I think the end of the year for Android will be won by Google. I yeah. think Google has the the marketing. I think people are going to be interested. Consumers are going to be interested in the notion of a G phone to fight the iPhone. And I think they've got the pricing right. The pricing being exactly the same as an iPhone in very similar form factors to the iPhone. Consumers are going to some consumers are going to look at that and say, oh, well, this is the Google iPhone. Well, that means it'll be good and it's expensive. So it's going to be premium. And that's why I want to buy it. Um, that emotional side of the purchasing, I think Google actually nailed um, that side of the equation, even though a lot of us tech geeks are going to look at it and go, but why? <laughs> I mean, yeah, th that is true. I, I had a number of friends, I think in total since the announcement, 10 friends who asked me they were going to buy a, a Pixel and I told none of them to buy it <laughs> because I just don't see how awesome the phone is. But I do agree with that mind share that you're beginning to make that that attractive well, this, switch. Yeah, because this was the big shift. I mean, yeah. to, to kill the Nexus brand means that Google is making a concerted effort to walk away from the developer audience and then also just sort of the community yeah. of people who like to tinker. There's no benefit in providing a cheaper phone when they're getting hammered at the $400 level, right? Mm -hmm. So the next big play is to see if they can't crack into the premium market and fight Apple directly. Uh, I think, you know, originally this was a notion of trying to take Android back from Samsung. Now it's actually very, uh, it, it very uh, beautiful timing on Google's part that Samsung is going through this major problem because there wouldn't be an Android crown jewel flagship Vanguard device with the Note 7 out of commission. So now we've got the pixels and the pixels will fill that gap. Yeah, um, imagine IG said uh, LG knows it, it wasn't when the phone, phone was, so they didn't want to spend money on ads. I mean, I agree on that notion, but when you have now, I, see, this an is, this opportunity, is what pisses, this is also what pisses me off yeah. as as like a, a, as a consumer and as a capitalist. LG doesn't it doesn't exist to further the cause of technology innovation. Corporations uh, exist. Uh, Corporations exist to provide value for their shareholders. Yeah, and this is another thing that LG is being well, really LG, deficient in. Well, you, can, you can't. You, consumers LG won't buy a phone. Side. LG consumers won't buy a phone that they don't know exists. Yeah, no, so, LG's LG's mobile side. I'll, I'll I'll argue that against. But on their on their home theater. No, no, no. The at at, at the they're... top of the umbrella, LG is a corporation. Corporations exist to derive and create value oh. for their shareholders. Oh yeah, but they're also the they're also the the first one to put the risk in putting OLED TVs out there, and no one else was doing that. Yeah, no, but even that too. Yeah. Let's put, let's talk about OLED TVs if quickly. LG didn't spend money on that either. They spent, I literally talked to the guys and their marketing team basically told me they don't have or don't want to spend money on TV ads for TVs because of Samsung. And I'm like, Samsung is throwing money out there. Yeah, Samsung got the NFL partnership, but they actually went out and spent money. That's yeah. why they're number one in TVs. Yeah. They spent money. That's why they were number one in yeah. phones. You got to spend money. You just yeah. have to. They you have know? to. I mean, if so, you don't so have I don't, to spend, I don't disagree. Do marketing, do so I don't disagree right. that people at LG care about innovation because you hire talent to to derive that value for your shareholders. But that's an individual who works for LG or a team who works for LG. That's not LG. Yeah. And so yeah. if it, this this is what I can never understand about companies like LG and HTC is how do you expect people to find your products and buy them? if you aren't going to talk about them. And when I talk to reps on the ground, how do you want me as someone who writes about this stuff and shoots videos about this stuff to feel when your reps are like cynical or they don't think it's very exciting? <laughs> well, I, or I, I, I was talking to someone with this engineering sample of the V20. I'm at IFA. This is super early. And they're like, yeah, I mean, it's a big screen phone. No one's going to buy it. You know, we're, we're, we're not too interested in really pushing that forward out. And United States carriers never really go for the add-ons like the really nice headphones anyway. I'm like, I'm trying to shoot a video of this project where I'm going to be communicating about something that I'm personally excited about, and you're throwing so much cold water on me right yeah. now. I think uh, I think that's a bit of a testament to what which which we can talk about. We can trans translate this to Samsung, but maybe um, about LG sort of inner culture. Because I even noticed when going to CES and events like that, if you ever watch and you go talk to lg reps this this is before this is after since we since they uh i, I think the rep team has changed since uh, on the mobile side of things 
if you go and you go talk to the TV folks, the, the appliance folks, and all them, they have a much better narrative about the things that they want to talk about. They they have some much more excitement about the things that they're they're, they're pushing. Oh, also, and, there are appliances I, reps. Like yeah, you talk to someone who in LG appliances, they're yes. going to tell you yeah, how they're yes. going to make your home amazing. Exactly. But you got to remember what they they have such a large. They have damn near every hotel out there, and they have such a large contract with that. They're so dominant, and that's why they care. And that also translates to the TVs in a lot of these places and industrial TVs. A lot of things come out of LG in that space. In the home, they're still working. Working on that, but I could still go over and talk to those reps. They have as much consignment as the Samsung folks when you talk to them about that stuff. But it's when you head over to the mobile section, and for whatever reason, and this this is this isn't. Oh no, no, this, I know this, why. I this know is why. recent. We know, know why, but this is, we know. I know why, but it's just it's recent since that person isn't around anymore that it's just kind of gotten down. It's kind of done this downhill slope, and it's been not one year, two years. It's like three years now of that's dropped off and i think they need to i think if they want to realistically continue to make these phones and not just have them in their portfolio but have them be successful they need to shake that up okay let, let me let me summarize this here for you lg had the announcement for the v20 a month ago right or a month and two weeks i well, i can't remember exactly how long it was probably mm -hmm. a month Is, did you say two months warren yeah, i think they announced it in august the v20 no the v20 came the day after at least september right Day after the iPhone. Yeah. Okay, and when, when, no, the day, day before, before the iPhone. iPhone. Day, day before the iPhone. Anyone that's that. that's when you had a press event. iPhone comes up and is announced after you. It's already released. We're yeah. still waiting for you to release the phone. So it will be two months. Well, when let, let's let's not even let's not even go Apple Apple Android. Let's just say this was supposed to be the first phone running Nougat, and Pixels are already shipping. Ship it exactly. So you delay it that much. Well, then, then turn with the first um, outside of Google State. Okay, th then the people who you give devices to, both of you, I'm not talking about myself, you tell them you cannot drop reviews because it is pre-production units. Then you don't send pre-production uh, production units out. So how is there supposed to be excitement for this device in the first place? I mean, yeah, I know Juan is excited about the core DAC and, you know, you've stressed that. And, you know, Warren has talked about the camera, but Again, like how do you preach that out to people? Then on an address, I'm gonna go the other way around. You have a company like Blue, small, yet in the last month have released three phones, have pushed it out there as much as they can, and probably have better coverage and probably better sales that LG will have with that V20 with those oh, devices combined. Well, I think I think what happened is is that I think this is the result of the they put out last year. They put out the G4, got in a lot of markets, and it actually sold pretty decently. They put out the V10, niche device, but it had its marketing kind of did its thing. They hit the G5, it duds, and the moment it dudded, it seems like <laughs> they just could not recover from that. It's like we made this phone that we thought was super cool. Oh crap, nobody likes it, and now it's just like we invested on this, and now we're afraid to invest again in something like the V20. So. I think there's a little bit of that hangover from from the G5 yeah, no, not being a success that, that oh, I totally agree but I also think that's that's exactly when a company needs to double down yeah. and increase if if you had a product that limped as badly as the G5 um this is not the right time to slow play your next product again samsung's gonna do that with dsa they're gonna double down on that thing yeah and it's gonna be they're gonna um, have to also yeah they, they have to but, but, but yeah. i mean you're right juan i mean especially when your market leader is bleeding i mean literally bleeding and exploding right in front and, of you this is and, and while, while there is ahead. no true competition for a note because the audience for the note is a productivity focused audience you have one of the best sort of tangent solutions for someone who's looking for a larger screen device. And also to, just mind share. And and to not try and increase you, that mind you know, share is you know I think be a criminal funny, though. Is if that it, if that and six P more six P start getting sold because it's essentially a note without the without the without the pen and it's all and it's like two hundred dollars cheaper. And they just I mean, start selling more of those <laughs> and it works for every carry and everybody knows what that thing is. That'd be hilarious. I, I mean, um, it would be just used ones or actually, no, you can no, get it on no. Huawei, right? No, it, no, you can still get it from directly from Google. No, no, it's, Google stopped selling it. Go to the store. You can't find it there. 
I found it there the other day. It was there. I still still listed. Are they bringing it back? I'm, I maybe maybe it was up there when I I saw that online with all the phones when when it first I, I, The last time I went there, I could not see a single Nexus device. So and I'm going to devices. It might it might be gone by now, but I'm. No, it was gone that pixels. day. Yeah, see, it wasn't. Pixels, no, it wasn't Google gone phone, that day. I remember seeing Ultra, it there. Google yes. Wi-Fi. Yeah. No. no pixel. View all phones. Mm-hmm. And it's just pixels. Yeah. 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 No, there was a rumor that they were going to be trying to sell out additional stock, but it doesn't look like they're doing it through the Google store. No, well, I, th- I remember it dropped in price because it dropped. I think, in price you know, you can still get it from Amazon directly from Huawei. I think you, if you type in, if you search Huawei six P, and, and I bet you some other outlets like uh, here. Let me see. B and H actually still might have some kicking around too. Yeah, yeah that's why Huawei is still selling it directly, and it's starting at uh, four forty nine. For six P unlocked, thirty two gigabytes. So, oh wait a minute, my bad. There's another version for four oh nine, six P. International stock. So, yeah, and also if you go to B and H, the unlocked uh, the unlocked phones are going for five hundred. Yeah, there's so, one here for funny. four. Thirty two is going for four seventy. I remember seeing yeah. all three of them next to each other, and the and the six P had gotten the knockdown of like four hundred to like. Four or five hundred bucks at start, so they, it's not up here now. Maybe they sold out of that inventory the day that everything launched. Yeah. Maybe, but I remember seeing it there. Uh, no, the, I, well, anyway, doesn't matter. But uh, you can pick it up from uh, either Amazon or BNH Photo if you guys are interested. Um, I was going to say before we move to our basically our final topic, which is the PlayStation VR. Um, thoughts on how Samsung can remedy things, like you know, at least no, no, not thoughts. Since we usually do these for companies anyway, we never get paid. <laughs> Act as a consultant. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, I was going to say, I was going to kickstart it by saying, here are some of the things I think Samsung needs to do. We know that they still haven't figured out the problem, but they did come out with a release yesterday saying that it will be a couple of weeks for them to finalize what the proper issue is. I suggest that, you know, they take the time and figure out exactly what it is. And then... Come yeah, to do what they didn't do the first round of, of, yeah. Yeah, come out with a, a, a press. I mean, it has to be really a big press conference or mm-hmm. announcement that is worldwide, not not in Korea where we can't see anything. This has to be a very forward-facing apology and saying, we messed up and we want to earn your trust. This is the issue that happened. This is the only device that it happened to. Does not affect any other device. I know uh, Gizmodo showed a uh, uh, what's that device again? The active uh, exploding, which I find it weird. They probably tried to explode it. I'm just throwing that out there because I don't like Gizmodo. So, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's also just sort of acknowledging right? this. This is this is why the note was so devastating. Is the difference between sort of those singular events in which any battery can explode and something which has proven to be a systemic problem problem yeah um now active phones i'm i'm a little skeptical there because we we especially in the tech <laughs> communities have sort of a reputation for abusing that phone <laughs> exactly. severely um we we did our water park test again this year with the active and for the first time we actually did have one fail we had six actives at a water park and one of them started getting kind of funky uh by the end of the day so you know that was because we were going out of our way to abuse these phones. No, no phone, no matter how ruggedly built, is meant to be abused. It's just more survivable if it is abused. Yeah, that, that too. And I think also uh, in terms of sales and trying to garner people's uh, mindset, I think doing a sale on the S7, S7 Edge this holiday season, dropping the price by $100 is something necessary. And packing things that you can pack in there. SD card, VR headset, those kind of yeah. things that you know because, bundle it in together. Because it's also it's also Samsung's way to apologize to their partners. Yeah. So we 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 were pretty confident that there would have been you know Black Friday and Thanksgiving sales for S7s and S7 edges, right? It's an older yeah. phone. There's there's plenty of inventory. They want to move that inventory before uh, we get into the new phone announcements. So now is the opportunity for Samsung to spend their advertising dollars for their carriers and their partners. Now is the time, like you were saying, to put out some mail-in rebates on accessories and things like that that come out of Samsung's coffers as an apology for uh, wasting, you know, carrier employee time and Best Buy employee time. That could go a long way to sort of mending some of those fences with the corporate partners and also 
delivering some warm, fuzzy feels for consumers who might have been a little gun shy about buying a Samsung product. So definitely agree. You drop the price by $100, that is the best phone in that $400 market. Done. It is. It will be four forty four. But if you pack in a VR headset, SD card, then you're now you're now taking that S seven to a whole different market altogether. You know mm -hmm. the people who are looking at the One Pluses, the Axion sevens. I would just go and say for fifty dollars more, more, you can have. You yeah, can you're have getting a VR S7. headset, which is ninety nine bucks. You gain a uh, uh, one twenty eight SD card, which technically is what like thirty forty bucks for that. So. Well, they're making well, 30, 40 bucks for consumers. Or whatever. Consumers, I'm, not saying, I'm, I'm saying, so your value is already added in there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. already at least in that new color S7 coming out, the blue yeah. coral, whatever it is on, on the red network for whatever. For mm -hmm. No, I, I definitely agree. I think I think that price drop and a bundle will definitely help. It's not going to solve the, all the problems, but at least we'll put, put that the S7 back in people's mindsets. And then multiple we'll, colors would be something I think yeah. they should do as well, too. Just releasing different colors of the phone as well. I think so. A yellow know. one for Sprint, a red yeah. one for Verizon, a magenta one for T-Mobile. Well, you know, you know, purple and green and blues. Like they did with the like we 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 don't get the chance really in America to get the, like the Avengers versions of those phones. Like yeah. those 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 are things that are cool that we oh, wait, don't get. It, yeah. Was it the um? Was it the uh, they did a the Seven one. Edge that had the Batman? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was gonna say. Is is that's you know things like yeah, that. <laughs> We don't get that though. Like that's the thing. Like those are the things that now they should be trying to push out to 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 the market. You know, it's, if they have to sell it directly or just whatever the case is, that would just be cool for them to 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 have those things that um, I think a lot of consumers would like to grab a unique unique different phone and 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 it can make up some ground for what they're losing here with the note. Yeah. Um, again, as we said, we provide free advice. <laughs> that is really we need awesome. to stop providing free advice and start charging for uh companies yeah. to listen to us because we've basically solved every problem in the tech community pretty ever. much i mean literally with this samsung could be <laughs> be back in some you know some green uh yeah if only they would put some green in our pockets pretty much <laughs> i love right. that for you. yeah okay um now let's move on to our last um uh topic which is the playstation vr launch launch on the 13th very quiet launch even though sony had an event in new york uh but i, I know warren you've you've done an unboxing on your channel on the playstation yeah. vr uh can you shed some thoughts on the device i can share my thoughts on usage i don't know if you have you tried I haven't, it out I, I, I haven't got a chance to try it out yet because that's our west coast side they did that uh that unboxing i know they got a couple of the vr bundles and the regular vr and they've been sort of banging away at it and so far they've liked it from what i've heard with it but i haven't had a chance personally myself yet to get to to, to play around with it though okay. but um it sounds like it's interesting it's a, it's a sit down experience versus some of the others that you get to move around with but um the the package and the bundle look pretty good in terms of what you get with it and and everything encompassing outside of needing the playstation 4. um it is the bundle good. is 400 bucks yeah 400 bucks yeah. for the playstation vr um have you tried out the playstation vr juan no i i, I still have the ESD. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean just try it out i mean like i know, I know I, kenny I, I, I haven't even had an opportunity to go hands-on i mean this is one of those things like I, i'm gonna be woefully out of the loop on just because pocket now we don't really have a gaming mm -hmm. division yeah. and so we don't get invited to stuff like that and we we didn't even make the trek out to e3 even though it's like just down the street from me <laughs> yeah, um right over in so. figaro it's right over there <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it, I, I, my thoughts on the PlayStation VR, it was fun um, using PlayStation VR. wasn't as much fun as either Oculus or um, Vive, but then again, that's also a much higher experience. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think PlayStation VR is good. Pricing and bundling is one of those interesting things. And to me, what's interesting is what Sony is doing this year as a whole. Because the of the they they're basically launching three consoles in the span of three months. One is the uh, uh, PlayStation One Slim, which no one is really buying because, of course, everyone's waiting for the Pro. But then there's also the PlayStation VR. So it puts I don't know how consumers are going to react. Like I understand consumers buying the PlayStation VR for the regular PlayStation, but when the Pro is coming out, also, which is another what four hundred dollars for the Pro, you're looking at. Uh, $800 investment 
just this year that at least the hardcore and PlayStation it, users. And it's not even bundled either. They don't have a bundle. They don't VR. have a bundle. Yeah, exactly. Package for that. Yeah. yeah. So that's where I'm, I'm a little bit concerned of what Sony's trying. To me, it's almost like a little overkill in terms of like dropping uh, devices out there for consumers, uh, especially what do do they want consumers to focus on the holiday? Is it PlayStation VR or is it PS4 Pro? You know, um, I understand the slim is just a slim, but you know, where do you want people's mindset as opposed to Microsoft who says, here's the Xbox One S and that's it. So it would be interesting to see how that plays um, and also how it helps people like Oculus and Vive that now that there's a VR experience uh within the home you know that doesn't yeah. require a pc setup or something like that um but uh to me it, i was just a little disappointed that sony had a very quiet launch to it it was a, you know we heard it was october 13th and then nothing at all there was no I think, it's like, I think they want a soft i think they're looking just for a slow build of this i think I that's mean, what it is and yeah, i think maybe. they did stuck in the slow build this thing and eventually get to a point you know where they can push VR a little bit harder, but I think they're like, they don't want to put all their eggs in the basket and this thing fails on them instantly. They'll I mean, get what they expect. Yeah, definitely true, which is interesting considering the opposite where uh, Zuckerberg is putting $250 million for developers just for games for Oculus. Wow. So at least on that side, we know that their Facebook is double down in it. Oh yeah, because I'm telling you, it's all about getting the Oasis right now. It legitimately is. <laughs> who can get there first to make? I'm being serious. Who can get there first to make their VR world the the premier one? Who's going to be the the, the main one? Facebook's putting their money into it. Um, HTC and Vive, I'm pretty sure they're going to push in their things over there. We're, you know, where we have a Steam world and we have an Oculus world. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting. And now we have the, you know, potentially two more coming in or maybe three, especially with Sony's worlds coming into play. You have uh, the Pro uh, Project Scorpio coming. We're not sure if they're going to make their own. Is, is there it's going to work with others? We don't know fully on that. Mike, Microsoft's hint is that it, it will work with either Oculus or could work um, with either one. Oh, or Vive. It, they don't look, it doesn't look like they want to because Oculus and both Vive can run on the Xbox currently right now internally. They've shown yeah. that. So so we'll see you know, where that goes. They also have their HoloLens thing as well, too, with just their augmented reality, another world and things like that happening. So um, we're in infancy of this, but it's like, really, where's the race for the one or two that will probably be the lead where everybody's in? And then everyone else just kind of falls to the wayside. It's just it's it's like, it's like watching the social uh, network wars all over again when we had all these social <laughs> networks, and then it just came down to two or three players now that are in this, and everyone else is just sort of an offshoot, something on the side. Speaking of social networks, before we round up, just quick thoughts: two things. One, um, Salesforce is pulled out. Basically, they're all waiting for uh, Twitter's uh, yeah. uh, financials to drop, and then they can uh, just drop in carnage. Yeah. And the second is uh, Snapchat IPO finally will be done by uh, Morgan Stanley and uh, I can't remember the other company, but it looks like they'll be filing IPO soon. I don't know if it's going to be end of the year or beginning of the next year. Beginning of the next year might be the best bet yeah. for an IPO filing. Question is, uh, who do you think will eventually end up with Twitter now that it looks like it's going to be after the financials where you know everyone's going to jump in? And then second question is, is it wise for Snapchat to go IPO? Snapchat is following so much of the Twitter nonsense, Twitter, Twitter path. It's just it's just funny. Uh, I, they need money, so yeah, <laughs> they almost have no real well, choice but to do this. This see, this, this isn't like this isn't the same as they make. They don't have enough data to sell like Facebook does. Facebook could have never went IPO and still had a ton of data to sell to, to, to sell out and to still make money and sustain itself. Zuckerberg saw a whole nother idea. We went I he's going IPO to make his little virtual world happen. And as he's just seeing all that all that sort of play itself out to be that social platform. Then you know the social operating system, what that's going going to be. People don't see that now, but I see where his thought process is a lot different. Twitter and the rest of them are all about just ads. They all they care about is what can we do on our social network to get people to click ads or people or companies to buy media ads into. And they're finding out that world is very, very tough. 
especially if you don't have a whole, whole uh, the, the robust amount of data that you need to be able to do it. So Snapchat, I think, has a little bit more of an opportunity there, but at this, they need something to try and grow themselves bigger, to try maybe an attempt to do something. But I mean, I see, I am seeing Instagram stories grow more and more and more each day. And this is how Instagram knocked off Vine. It was a slow, steady build to where does anyone even go on Vine, mention Vine, or talk about Vine at all whatsoever. Snap just kind of, I think, kind of swooped up what was left of that. I could see the same thing happening here with, with, with the way they're taking that Instagram stories, the way they're doing it, and it could be that same slow sort of kill off that happened. So I mean, it's, it's difficult in this day and age to launch an app, which is a process. There's nothing stopping a major player from replicating your process. Yeah. And that's a, that to me is totally what killed the uh, what, what was there was another one that was like Vine too. I can't remember now. But it's the same thing <laughs> oh, like um, with, with like live streaming services too, like, Mere, uh, it was like Meerkat. Periscope and Meerkat. You know, you're you're talking about a process. That process can be incorporated into a YouTube, into a Facebook, into mm -hmm. a Twitter. There's nothing special about your process yeah um and Speaking and so that, yeah. and so unless snapchat has the really killer solution for monetizing their service then i completely agree with warren that this could be a slow a, a long slow bleeding death for the entire platform they'll have a lot of community momentum i'm not saying they're going to disappear tomorrow but vine just did like too. vine i well, had that community momentum too they did I, I, I was it. at a what is a social media week about three years ago and i got a ton of shit because like everyone's all up on Vine and Vine is going to do this and Vine's going to be amazing. And I said the same thing, like Vine is a process. There's nothing stopping you from making little looping short form videos on any other video <laughs> sharing yeah. service. Yeah. Um, unless Vine has some other, you know, momentum in building up this community. They don't it's have, novel, they don't but have it's not the social graph that Facebook and Google sort of no. have to back up everything that that does. So it's, and, it's and it like, did take, it did take about two years for other companies to catch up. And now, you know, we don't hear about people really looping their vines anymore. It's, I mean, it's, I mean, to me, the death of and Instagram, the death of vine came when uh, I never, I never had a vine account. I never jumped in, but I would watch people's vine video collections on where, YouTube. YouTube. Those YouTube. are all YouTube the or Facebook. Thing. It was YouTube always on there. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. look and, and one of the reasons why Vine didn't have a system to monetize for users. Nope. So you would make your popular vines, then export them to YouTube, and then you could monetize them. Yeah, and all it did was sort of enrich the short form storytelling on yeah. YouTube. Because <laughs> yeah. because if you look at it like when I mean, you look at um um the way Instagram is using Snapchat now, the only thing they haven't really done is the paid business model and the portals that are kind of automatically show up like you see in Snapchat's really crappy application where they um, where you see all like, you know, businesses can buy portals and then you can see whatever short stories and things that are popping that's, that's, up. That's the swipe away is coming. Yeah. Yeah, but no, but, but no they'll, they'll eventually add that. But the thing that the thing that will come into play is whenever Facebook decides to allow some type of monetization for, for users when they push up content in some way. Once that sort of happens on the Instagram platform and whatever way they're gonna do it, it and it, it it's pretty much over. The only the only other thing they have to click on at that point is you have Facebook Live, here comes Instagram Live to go along with it, and then it's it's pretty much a done deal at that point. I mean, look at Paris Periscope was the big Big live feature. Everybody was doing Periscope, all this Periscope stuff. YouTube was sort of trying to do their thing. And I said, I will wait for Facebook to do this. And when the second they do this, it's going to be done. It took one woman with a Chewbacca mask to completely destroy everyone. They became the number one platform for <laughs> one woman doing a Chewbacca and a Chewbacca mask. Think about that. Like that's it's I mean, yeah, true, true. But anyway, guys, um, it's been a it's been a fun show. Thank you very much. Um, there's something I mentioned uh, a month ago. I didn't actually mention the beginning of the show because as I was starting the show, Warren decided to cut me off and then we just jumped. Oh, out. burn. Sick burn. Ah! Wrecked. <laughs> R-E-K-T. But anyway, we, uh, we said we wanted to show appreciation to our fans who have been jumping in the chat, chiming in, uh, leaving you know, solid questions and comments. And we, we, I, I don't know if we're going to be doing this monthly or every two weeks, but at least monthly is a safe breath anyway for now. Um, so the weekly monthly. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. No, 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 no. This is just this is <laughs> we just going the weekly fan appreciation. Just, just, just okay. let's not call it a weekly monthly. My God, that was 
Marvel. <laughs> that was really funny though. I liked it. But then again, <laughs> I also, monthly giveaway, and I was like, I, I like, I like silly we, dad jokes. So yeah, we, we look like a holes doing this, right? <laughs> so, so, so this, this today on the show, we're giving away the the Soul Storm portable speaker. Um, this is really nice, cute little speaker. Right? It's waterproof, yeah, yeah. all that fun stuff. And we have a winner for you know you guys have been commenting, we enjoy it, and the winner is Haz Kashif. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, I would say hit me up on Twitter uh, and uh, just, you know, so I can send, uh, get, get your information and we can shoot this out to you. I was going to say hit me up on YouTube, but it's so hard now. I don't even know where you can send a direct message on YouTube. No, there is a way, but nobody does it. <laughs> I have no idea anymore. So uh, I was to say hit me up on Twitter. That's, that's By the way, that's Kashif Raja. Uh, Kashif Raja? Kashif Raja. Okay, yeah. Kashif Raja. Right, when, Kashif when, you Raja. Said, when you said, when you said, when you said has Kashif, that was because I asked if has... Oh, oh has you know, Kashif yeah, Raja. It's, it's you're, you're getting a little behind the scenes action on how we communicate during the show here too, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Kash Kashif Raja, you 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 won the speaker. I was just gonna let that one go. Yeah, no, no, I was gonna let that one go. I was waiting for him to figure it out. I was like, he'll get it. He'll get no, it. I just, <laughs> he wasn't getting it. Though. I just all, all I saw was he'll do. Hash Kashif, I was like, all right, that's his name. Bro. Let's do this. <laughs> I, I apologize, Kashif Raja. I apologize. So hit me up on Twitter and um, and yeah, and uh, we'll send this uh, out to you. So like we've, Fab. <laughs> we've gotten to the point of the show where we talk about what we currently have on the channel and what we can expect next week. So I'll start off with you, Mr. Warren Bowman. Yes, letting me leaving me there to hang. <laughs> Better make this quick. <laughs> hey, 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 you're a smart man. I thought. He'll, he'll get there. He'll get there. <laughs> uh, um, uh, right now, we have up is our uh, PS. Uh, I keep calling to call it PS4 VR, but the PlayStation VR unboxing is 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 up on there. Uh, Kenny and a new, new one of our new editors, Roberto, has um, done some stuff and done a bit of an unboxing, and we expect to get a little bit more stuff for that going forward. Um, for next week, I'm not quite sure yet because I, I went to the dentist and had one of my wisdom teeth pulled out, so we're going to have to see how well I feel as to how many more videos will come out in the next week. So okay. hopefully hopefully I'll be okay. I'm feeling fine now, but who knows? <laughs> All right, uh, Juan. Welcome, King. We can... <laughs> oh, <fuck. Wow. laughs> I'll just, I'll just take it from there, Thunder E. Wow. Thank you for that great uh, intro. Uh, uh. Um, okay, so oh, uh, and stuff, and and well, yes, and we can't forget Warren's stuff. Um, on the on the channel right now, uh, I'm still rocking a, a pre-release V20, but we did do a V20 V10 comparison. Just you know, the we try to answer the question: Is the one year upgrade worth it? You know, for people who might be interested in in moving up for a phone. And there's a very special surprise around the four minute mark of that video for people who are really interested in what the V20 can do. Um, it's funny because in the comments. I can see who watched only like two minutes of the video and who actually made it to four minutes of that video. And I might have a special little Easter egg in uh, in that video that only 50 people have found. So for a video that's been watched 51,000 times, I, I know exactly who the real Pocket Now fans are uh, on that video. Uh, for next week, um, uh, oh, for next week, I actually, we've got stuff that I can't really talk about. We're going to be backtracking some of the audio reviews. Uh, we're, we're trying to start up a real audio review like we do our real camera reviews. So I'm going to try and get back to some of the other phones that were released in 2016 with some short form graphs and charts talking about speaker and headphone performance. Uh, Galaxy S7 probably will be the next one up just because we're lacking the note. Um, before we lead into uh, pixels and, and uh, V20s. And then um, we have a review coming out on Monday that I'm currently under embargo on, but I think it'll be a fun little product that, that people will think, think that people will think is interesting. So definitely be on the lookout for uh, a Monday morning video at Pocket Now. All right, cool. Um, on my end, uh, currently on the channel, uh, I can't remember now, let me check. Seriously, I just forgot. Um, Galaxy Note goodbyes, you know, and suggestions if you're a Note user. Uh, we've got earphones from Massa Dynamic, the ME05 is really nice. Definitely check that out. Gears of War review also did that. Uh, the game looks great in HDR. It looks really good. Um, and an Acer. Play it in HDR. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, you know, it, it's, 
it's a really good game in HDR and also good on PC too. PC specs, that thing really pushes. Um, so you need to have, I mean, it, it, it's scalable because it's Unreal 4, but if you have a high-end system, you can crack this up to 8K, uh, but you might only get like 13 frames per second. Uh, <laughs> um, the uh, Coming up on the channel next week, um, or at least starting this weekend up, um, this guy, the Asus uh, Zenfone 3 Deluxe, um, we'll do the review on this um, probably next week. We also have uh, back there MSI gaming laptop. Uh, it's I, I mentioned that I was going to make it this week. I just didn't do it, so apologize. It's going to be next week. We'll drop that, and um, and we have a few other like fun projects to do with uh, our camera security security cameras, or at least um, uh, you know cameras you can use around the home whether it's for baby monitoring or security, as well as also some network connectivity within the home. So stay tuned for that. Um, and hopefully our PlayStation VR should be in next week and then we'll do some videos on that. And uh, maybe down the line, we'll do a comparison of all three uh, VR headsets for you guys. So that is pretty much it on this end, guys. Um, wanna say thank you very much. Um, Appreciate everyone for jumping in and chiming in. Um, Hashif, please, what is your Twitter handle? So I know you're the one who's actually tweeting me on Twitter. Oh, I think he sent it, Raja Mania. Raja Mania, okay, thank you for checking that out. Um, but yeah, so just send me a tweet so at least I, so I can uh, contact you. But thank you everyone for chiming in, joining. Uh, we do this every week, 12 p.m. Eastern time uh, on Saturday. I uh, want to thank Mr. Warren Bowman from BW1, of course, as always. You can check his channel out. It's bw1.com on YouTube, as well as bw1.com on Twitter. And Mr. Juan Bagnell, you can check him out on Pocket Now, where his videos are up, as well as Some Gadget Guy, that is his Twitter handle, and also his other YouTube channel, where he does some other Gadget Guy stuff. So thank you very much, everyone, for again commenting. Uh, great show, guys, and always enjoy entertainment. Bam.